Daniel Boone. Table of Contents. Introduction. When Daniel Boone was born in 1734, parts of what is now the United States still belonged to the British. He was born in Pennsylvania. At that time, Pennsylvania was as far west as most Europeans had ever been. The Americans and the British still fought over the wild land between the Allegheny Mountains in Pennsylvania and the Mississippi River. Daniel Boone brought American settlers into those lands for the first time. The Adventurous Boy As a boy, Daniel Boone rarely went to school. He loved the trees and wild animals of the forest. He spent all his days in the woods listening for the calls of birds and the footsteps of animals. He became an extremely skilled hunter. Though he was tall and sturdy, he learned to walk silently. One day he decided he would live in the woods he loved. He got his rifle, whistled to his faithful dog, and disappeared into the gloomy forest. His parents were not worried at first. Daniel often camped overnight, but by the third night they decided to gather a search party. The forest rang with their shouts, but nobody had any luck. Daniel hadn't left a trace. Finally, someone spotted a tiny stream of smoke. The party found a simple cabin made of sticks, bark, and moss. Sitting by the fire was Daniel himself. He was surprised that so many people were worried about him. He apologized, picked up his things, and followed the party home. This was the first of many times Daniel Boone disappeared into the forest, leaving his family to worry. The Quiet Life Daniel's family moved to North Carolina when he was a young man. There he met and married his wife. Soon they had children. He had worked on his farm to support his family. He had to live near town so they could buy goods. He didn't have many chances to go hunting in the woods he loved. But one day, a friend of Daniel's returned from a hunting trip. He had been to Kentucky, which was part of the wild land being fought over. Daniel listened longingly to the stories of forests stretching to the horizon and teeming with wildlife. From that day, Daniel vowed he would live in Kentucky. Daniel went camping in Kentucky with his brother. He had never seen such a beautiful land in his life. The brothers returned to North Carolina, but only long enough to gather their families and friends. They set out for Kentucky with nearly 80 people. The trip took almost two months, and it was dangerous. Daniel Boone and his party were not the only people who wanted to live in Kentucky. The Troubled Settlement Native Americans had lived in Kentucky for thousands of years. Wherever pioneers settled, they took land away from the Native Americans. There was constant war. Daniel Boone's trip was no different. When the Native Americans saw Daniel's party with their wagons, cows, and horses, they attacked. After the battle, Daniel mourned to find that his oldest son had been killed. The party finally arrived near the Kentucky River, where they built a fort. They built tough log houses in a tight square, all facing inward. They extended the back walls of the houses into high log fences. The fences formed a solid wall around the settlement, but still the Native Americans fought for their land. This was not the pleasant outdoor life Daniel Boone had imagined. The Capture Eventually the fort ran out of salt. Salt was essential in those days. Before refrigerators, the only way to preserve food was to cure it with salt the way we do with jerky. There was a salt water spring a few days journey from the fort. Boiling its water made salt. Daniel took several men and set out toward the spring. Once there, they were suddenly surrounded by a large group of Native American warriors. Daniel Boone had become famous for defending his fort. The warriors were thrilled to capture him. The warriors took Boone and his companions all the way to Chillicothe, Ohio. The trip on foot was long and difficult. Along the way, the Native Americans became impressed with Daniel's skill in the forest. This skill was rare in a European. Such a man was very valuable. Eventually, they took Boone and his men to Detroit. The city was then a small outpost owned by the British. Both the British and the Native Americans were fighting the American settlers. The two groups had become uneasy friends. The Native Americans thought they would get quite a reward if they turned the Americans over to the British. But the, when the warriors arrived in Detroit, 
they realized that they did not want to give up Daniel Boone. The leader of the British was outraged. He had heard of Daniel Boone's bravery and skill. He wanted to take Daniel prisoner very bad, but the Native Americans refused to hand him over. The rest of the men stayed with the British. Daniel Boone was taken back to Ohio. The Native Americans held a ceremony to adopt Daniel Boone into their tribe. They shaved his hair very short. They dressed him in feathers and ribbons. They took him to the river and purified him with water. The chief gave him the honor of joining, joining the tribe. The ceremony finished with a wonderful feast. Escape. Even if Daniel Boone appreciated the Native Americans' welcome, he missed his family and wanted to go home. The Native Americans respected Daniel, but they did not fully trust him. They didn't want him leaving and becoming their enemy again. They watched him carefully all the time. They let him go hunting, since they were very far from Daniel's home, but they only gave him a few bullets. For every bullet missing, Daniel had to bring back an animal to pr prove he wasn't keeping ammunition. One day, Daniel went with a group back to the salt springs where he had been captured. He knew this was his best chance to get away, but the Native Americans watched him closely as they boiled the salt water. Unfortunately, it was not just salt they were after. Now that Daniel Boone was theirs, they were scouting to make an attack on his fort. Daniel managed to slip away. As soon as he was out of sight of the camp, he began to run. Daniel ran all the way back to the fort. He only stopped for one meal. The trip took five days. When he returned, his friends welcomed him as though he had returned from the dead. But sadly, Daniel's family had given up for dead, given him up for dead and moved back to North Carolina. Saving the Fort Even though he missed his fam family, Daniel knew he had to help defend the fort. He immediately made plans to prepare against the attack. When the battle began, the fort was fully stocked with ammunition and supplies. The Native Americans were defeated after eight days. The fort, named Boonesboro after Daniel himself, was never attacked again. Daniel wanted to see his family more than anything. He returned to North Carolina and they had a joyous reunion. After his long ordeal, Daniel stayed home with his family. He farmed quietly for several years. But nothing could keep Daniel Boone away from the forest, not even old age. He heard rumors of land even farther west that had not been touched by European settlement. His eyes lit up when he thought of the wilderness of Missouri. Again, he convinced his family to move. They settled about 50 miles west of what is now St. Louis. He lived there for the rest of his days, often going into the woods simply to breathe the pure air. Glossary. Ammunition. Anything fired from a gun, bullets, missiles, cannonballs, etc. Cure. To prepare food by drying, salting, or pickling it so that it will not spoil. Goods. Things that are manufactured and bought. Mourned. Grieved or felt sad, especially for someone who has died. Outpost, a small settlement far away from any other settlements, usually a military settlement or fort used to defend a frontier. Purified, cleansed, cleansed, all dirt and bad things removed. Scouting, exploring and planning an attack before the main group of soldiers arrives. Teeming, filled with, swarming. <laughs>